Welcome students. This video is about quant preparation when we are one month away from CAT. Well, uh, this goes with an assumption that you have gone through your basic material solving of various chapters of quant. When it comes to quant, you can divide quant into various areas. For example, number based chapters, then percentage based chapters, for example, uh, profit and loss or simple interest, compound interest, etc. Then we have ratio based chapters. For example, uh, variation or time and work or time speed distance or average partnership or allegation mixture, etc. After that, we have geometry based chapters, we have algebra based chapters, for example, linear equation, quadratic equation, we have set theory, logarithm. We also have chapters based on modern maths, for example, competition combination or probability or functions or even inequalities. These all are important areas of quant. This also includes the clocks and calendar based questions as well. It is general expectation that in your months long preparation of CAT, you should have solved approximately 100, 100, 100 questions of each of this chapter. These 100 questions should include a variety of questions. Most of them should be of easy to medium difficulty level because that goes in sync with last three years CAT papers actual difficulty level of quant section. So let's understand various do's and don'ts of quant preparation in last 30 days. I'll start with the do's. First one, revision of theories. Well, uh, the quant section has huge number of theories, properties, identities that drive many, many, many questions. In the month of October, you might have written some test papers which might have led to a feedback that some of the questions you were stuck in those questions because you were not well versed with some of the concepts or theories. That means if a quick revision of all the theories or properties or identities can help us save some precious minutes or can help us clear some more questions, it is worth. Especially the geometry part where questions are directly based on theories and without those knowledge of theories, you can actually get stuck with the question for a long time. So, a detailed revision of all the theories and properties and some tricks driving certain varieties is recommended. Second point is taking care of accuracy part. Well, quant or in other words, maths is actually black and white when it comes to solving a question. Either you solve a question, find an answer, you find the same answer written in one of the options, you mark the question or you don't mark at all because things are pretty much black and white. You know the theory, you get the question, you did the calculation right, you get the answer or generally you don't match the one of the options. So a test taker, especially a test taker who expects very high percentiles should target very high accuracy as well. It's a common myth that with more attempts, you end up getting more score. No. For example, suppose you end up attempting 24 questions. There are three scenarios that I would like to discuss. Let's say student A who attempts 24 questions, but with 15 correct and 9 incorrect. With the ongoing marking system, the student would get 15 threes are 45 minus 9. That is 36 marks in total. Student B, who is little better at accuracy. Let's say the student gets 18 question correct and 6 incorrect. That means it is 18 threes are 54 minus 6, 48. That's a far better score than the previous score of 36. But the real champions are the ones who have even better accuracies. Out of 24 questions, good students would end up scoring 21 questions right. With just 3 incorrect, the score would be 60. So a common similarity between all the three students or the test takers was they all attempted 24 questions. But the first kid ended up getting a score of 36, the second one scored 48, whereas the champion scored 60. So the real magic lies in the accuracy and the accuracy should be targeted or even chased when you are doing practice at home as well. It doesn't come naturally in the test paper if you, are do if you don't follow accuracy in your solving as well. So when you solve question, you sit with a target of finishing it and getting the answer right. Silly errors should not be appreciated. Common ways to take care of your accuracy is first of all learning from your own testing experience. 
by now you should have started attending some mock cat papers those are near actual cat format papers who put you in the same testing situation if you are not getting good accuracy in those papers that means the reasons behind them they lie inside the paper you try understanding reason behind each and every wrongly attempted question one by one you might see some pattern for example probably you you did some mistake in understanding the question or probably interpretation of the question was wrong or you missed a single word not or less than probably you did some silly error in the calculation or probably you didn't know the concept right something other thing but you must understand what is actually stealing your marks by careful observation and by setting up higher expectation in form of accuracy with every next mock ultimately leads to satisfactory accuracies moving towards third point in last 30 days your most of the solvings happen in form of test papers that means they teach us the best whenever you finish one mock cat paper of 3 hours your target should be finishing remaining questions almost immediately after the paper all those questions that you could not attempt all those questions that went wrong all those questions that you gave lesser priority than other question they teach us something about our competency with different chapters and our testing behavior you end up finding some weaker areas of yours that you tend to ignore probably the areas that you once learnt but probably because of lack of revision you have lost confidence over those areas if by later revision they can be kept under control again it's wonderful so the ongoing revision needs can be identified by a thorough analysis of ongoing mock cat papers that you should be attempting in the last 30 days fourth point although writing test papers and learning the best out of it is the first priority but some of you might have some additional time in last 30 days over and above finishing the test papers well if you have some extra time you have already done your revision you should go for some quant sectionals by quant sectionals i mean collection of quant chapters questions random questions coming from different chapters acting as a quant section of cat this would put you in a semi testing situation where you have to select some questions over other questions just to maximize your score more practice would lead you to more more comfort during your test paper so those were various do's in last one month for quant So what are some don'ts for last one month as far as quant preparation is concerned? First big don't is do not start a fresh chapter from today. There are approximately 27 to 30 chapters that can be called a part or a syllabus of the quant section. Not every student may find comfort with all the chapters. Many of you in fact might have kept some chapters aside. Well, if you started your CAT preparation months back, and if you didn't do justice to some chapters, let's say two chapters or five chapters, till now, there is no point of going for them now. In fact, this is the phase where you should consolidate what you know and not try to learn something that you always avoided. Revise those things that you have forgotten, but don't start something afresh. Those chapters should be kept aside. Anyway, in a quant section, you have enough questions that can be put aside. rest of the questions can actually get any desired percentage second point that is highly not recommended is starting a material that is very difficult last 30 days before cat they are generally very emotional for a test taker who has high expectation there are things that are, that get discussed in various student community there are always questions which are more difficult than the existing set of questions a test taker should understand that the cat is about easy to medium questions first be it any section that means in last month you should not waste your time solving difficult questions back to back because that diverts your attention from easy to medium questions their accuracy their selection to just solving difficult concepts which are literally infinite in count and in variety third big don't is being satisfied with what marks you are getting in the con section of various mock cats well probably by this time you should have gone through up to 10 mock cats and probably equal more are lined up from here till cat it was a phase in which you might have grown or probably uh, your marks have got stabilized for some time with more tests comes more confidence 
where the emotional quotient goes down, the maturity of attempting the test paper goes up, you start becoming uh, less worried while leaving a question. So this ultimately leads you to better score mock after mock. An added attention towards accuracy should finally give you that much needed push that you always needed. So believing that the marks are going to stay within this small range is a myth. In last month, in fact, you can plan the big jump in marks by just understanding what do you know and just getting those questions see the final answer. The fourth point is something that I have already mentioned in this video. That is unnecessarily increasing attempts with the hope of getting better score. Well, this is highly not recommended. Focus on accuracy first and never on number of attempts unless you are very sure about the difficulty level of the paper. Ensure that these learnings are there in your overall solving as well as in your test taking both. All the best.